Apple has the best Mac lineup in years. So the real question is, which Mac should you guys get? Well, don't worry because we got you covered with our Q2 2021 Mac Buyer's Guide. Starting from the most affordable Macs to the most expensive ones and covering real world use cases, which upgrades you should get when you configure your Mac, all in order for you to find out which is the perfect Mac for you. Starting off with the most affordable Mac that you can buy, we have the M1 Mac Mini which starts from $700. The main reason to get the M1 Mac Mini is to get access to Apple's M1 processor at the lowest possible price point. We all know how good the M1 is, as it outperforms the most powerful laptop chips from Intel, so yeah, this thing is no joke at all. The M1 Mac Mini also has the highest number of ports for any M1 device, with a selection of 1 gigabit Ethernet, which can now be upgraded to 10 gig, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, as well as two USB Type-A ports. In terms of what you can do on it, you can do pretty much anything from photo editing to coding to video editing, but you need to be aware that the M1 chip, whilst it does outperform Intel's and AMD's integrated graphics, um, it is weaker than a modern dedicated GPU. What I'm saying here is that if your video projects tend to have loads of 3D effects and titles, the M1 chip won't be able to keep up. But as long as your timeline is more basic, the M1 will easily be able to edit any 4K footage or even some 6K footage that you throw at it. The Mac Mini is also perfect to be used as a server, as not only do you have a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, but the M1 chip runs very cool, so if you have a rack of these, your ambient temperature would not be affected much. So it seems like the M1 Mac Mini is ideal for most people, but you need to be aware of some limitations. For example, you can only connect up to two displays, which is a limitation of the M1 chip, and eGPUs are not supported either. And the biggest downside is that you have to buy an external monitor and keyboard and mouse yourself, which would automatically bring up the cost. Of course, that if you already have these, then you're good. But if you don't, then expect to add a few hundred dollars extra on top of the base price. Speaking of the base price, which extra options should you consider when you configure your Mac Mini? Well, to be honest, since the Mac Mini is a desktop computer, you could easily rely on external storage, so I wouldn't really touch the storage unless you really wanted to, and the 8GB of RAM is mostly fine as we didn't really see any major performance improvements by having 16GB of RAM over 8 on M1 Max. I would say that the only one that you should definitely upgrade is the Gigabit Ethernet to 10GB should you need to connect to a NAS or use this in a server environment. As if you don't, you would need to use one of those two Thunderbolt ports to get the 10 gig Ethernet speeds. Now, something that I should mention about the Mac Mini is that there is also an Intel model, which starts from $1,100 or $400 extra. And the only reason why you would even consider this is one, if you need more ports, as the Intel model has four Thunderbolt 3 ports compared to just two, then number two, the Intel model does support an eGPU, which the M1 does not, and then three, the Intel model also supports native Windows, which the M1 does not. Next up, we have the MacBook Air, which starts from $1,000. The main reason to get the Air is if you want the cheapest M1 Mac, that is also a laptop. Compared to the Mac Mini, you get all the performance benefits of the M1 chip. Now, it is a tiny bit slower, as the baseline only has a 7-core GPU, and the MacBook Air is also passively cooled, but unless you're exporting projects 24-7, the difference is honestly negligible. The best use case scenario for the MacBook Air is for students, or for photographers, or even for video editors to some extent, or really for anyone who just wants the best all-around laptop that money can buy today. It is also the best MacBook for typing, as you get this angled keyboard, and with the P3 display, it is also super color accurate and great for any visual artists. So compared to the Mac Mini, what do you get and what do you lose? Keep in mind that you're paying $300 more. Well, you get a portable computer with a built-in 18-hour battery. You also get a built-in keyboard, a built-in trackpad, and also a built-in display. However, you lose on the ports, as you only get two Thunderbolt ports and nothing else. You also lose on the performance slightly, as I mentioned before, and you also lose on external display support. The Mac Mini can support two external displays, while the MacBook Air can only support one. 
So depending on your workflow, you might want to get the Mac Mini instead. Now, if you do go for the MacBook Air, which configuration should you get? Well, here, the most important thing is storage. Since, you know, the MacBook Air is a portable laptop, you just don't want to be running around with external drives attached. I would say you should get at least 512 gigabytes of storage, which will put you at $1,200. Also, a uh, fun fact, we're trying to reach a 50-50 split in terms of subscribers watching our videos. At the moment, we're at 22.7. So definitely click subscribe as it's free. You'll get to see more awesome videos of ours, hopefully. Um, and it will also help us reach our goal quicker. So thank you. Okay, next up we have the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch, which starts from $1,300. And really the main reason to get a 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro is if you want to get an M1 MacBook Air that has slightly more features. The performance between the two is nearly identical, with the MacBook Pro M1 being just barely faster than the Air thanks to its built-in fan, so the use cases remain the same. However, the MacBook Pro does come with a touch bar, should you prefer that. It also comes with a 100 nit brighter display, in case you need to use your MacBook outdoors a lot, and it also comes with a 20 hour battery life compared to 18 on the Air. So if you travel a lot, then getting a MacBook Pro M1 over the M1 Air is the better option. The MacBook Pro also offers better speakers, better microphones, but because of the flat edge form factor, it is not as comfortable to type on as the MacBook Air is. So if you're a writer, just go with the Air. But if you do go for the Pro, which configuration should you go for? Now, my answer here is pretty much identical to the MacBook Air. Focus more on storage than on RAM as the M1 chip is very efficient in terms of memory, so 8GB of RAM acts like 16GB on Intel, and 16GB on M1 acts like 32 on Intel. One thing to keep in mind is that if you buy the Pro for video editing purposes, or anything that requires a better GPU, the more RAM you have, the more video memory you will have as well. So in that case, going for the 16GB of RAM is a good choice. But getting at least 512 gigabytes of storage is more important for the majority of you out there. Now, just like with the Mac Mini, Apple also sells an Intel variant of the MacBook Pro 13 inch, which starts at $1,800. So who should get that? My answer here is just like with the Mac Mini, the Intel MacBook Pro offers you more ports, as you get four Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of just two, and you also get eGPU support as well as native Windows support. And on top of that, you can connect a lot of external displays to 4K 60 monitors, and then if you have an eGPU, you can connect even more than that. Um, on the M1 model, you can only connect a single display, which kind of sucks if you need more than one. But for the most part, the M1 is a few times faster with double the battery life, which I would say is more important in the long run. Something that I do need to mention here is that Apple will be releasing the brand new 14-inch MacBook Pro this year, which is said to replace the higher-end Intel model. So this will give us more ports, a larger and brighter display, and of course, a new design. However, this MacBook is set to start at around $1,800, so it will be more expensive than the M1 model is now. If you can wait though, I would just suggest waiting. And now I have an important message for you. You all know what a VPN is by now. They protect you while browsing the web, while also allowing you to access websites such as Netflix US, for example, from outside the US. But Surfshark, our sponsor for this video, is a very different VPN from the rest. And that's because number one, Surfshark offers you a fair price. At just 1.6 pounds a month and three months for free by using the coupon code Zen of Tech, Surfshark is more than half the price of what some other VPNs cost. Then number two, Surfshark offers you speeds that are almost as good as when you don't have a VPN enabled. Most VPNs drop the speed severely when you're using them, but not Surfshark. And number three, Surfshark also includes some very useful features at no cost, such as CleanWeb, which is essentially an ad blocker, Surfshark Alert that detects if your private information has been leaked online, as well as Surfshark's own web search engine, which allows you to browse the web anonymously. Use the link below or the coupon code Zone of Tech to get 83% off as well as an extra three months for free. Now at the same price of $1,300 as the MacBook Pro, we also have the brand new M1 24 inch iMac. And I gotta say, if the MacBook Air was the laptop that I would recommend to most people, the M1 iMac is the desktop that I would recommend to most people. Here's the thing, the M1 iMac is basically a Mac mini 
with a built-in display and fewer ports, as we only get two Thunderbolt ports on the base model. However, the best part about the iMac is that it comes with an amazing 24-inch 4.5K display that is also a DCI-P3 panel, making it an outstanding display for not just media consumption, but professional color work too. If you were to buy a Mac Mini and buy the LG Ultrafine 4K display, which is the closest display to the iMac, it would end up costing you $1,400. And that display is actually lower res at 4K versus 4.5K compared to the iMac, so overall it is an inferior display. Therefore, if you are a photographer or even a video editor, and you need the best computer and display in one single package, and also at an affordable price, then this iMac is exactly what you're looking for. On top of this, compared to the Mac Mini, plus an external display setup, the iMac has better speakers, as well as a built-in webcam. In terms of what configurations to get, I would highly recommend you get the higher-end $1,500 model, as you get two more USB-C ports, as well as Gigabit Ethernet and the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. Also, as with the Mac Mini, configuring it with more RAM and especially more storage isn't necessarily required, as this is a desktop computer, so you can always attach more external storage. Now, for some reason, Apple is still selling the previous-gen 21.5-inch iMac for $1,100. Do not buy that iMac, it is the worst Mac that Apple sells right now. Even though it does have an Intel CPU, so you could use it with Windows and an eGPU, you're better off just buying a used 21.5 inch 4K iMac or a 27 inch 5K iMac instead. Speaking of the 27 inch iMac, this one starts from $1800, and it is a trick you want to recommend because Apple is working on an updated model too, a full redesign with some incredible performance upgrades, which is rumored to launch either in June or in November. But if you cannot wait and you need a powerful desktop Mac for video editing, graphic design, and intensive workflows, the 27 inch iMac is the one to get. The biggest advantage that the 27 inch iMac offers over the 24 inch M1 is a larger 5K display and much, much better GPU performance. For example, the maxed out 27 inch iMac with the uh, 5700 XD GPU scores almost four times higher compared to the M1 MacBook Pro. Harry from our team uses a 2019 maxed out 27 inch iMac and he's edited a ton of our videos on that. For video editing, this is still the best computer that we have in the office, and that's alongside other M1 Macs. Um, so if you are a serious video editor or a 3D modeling artist and you need a Mac with a great built-in screen and outstanding performance and you just don't want to wait for the redesign a few months down the line, then getting the 27-inch iMac is a great decision. The port selection is very good too, as we get an SD card slot, four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, as well as two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a one gigabit ethernet port. And since it runs on an Intel chip, which does not perform the M1 as it is a desktop chip, we also get native Windows support and eGPU support as well. The 27 inch iMac is really the only Intel Mac that I would highly, highly recommend. Okay, now let's talk about which configuration to get as we do get a lot of options with this iMac. The number Number one rule is that if you are a photographer and you use Lightroom a lot, focus on the CPU upgrades first. Same goes if you're a developer. If you're a video editor or someone who does a lot of 3D modeling, then focus on the GPU. Therefore, if you need to upgrade the CPU, the best option is the 10th gen 8 core i7 processor. You can also upgrade this to an i9, but it will cost you $400 extra and the thermal system of the iMac isn't amazing anyways, so you won't be able to make full use of that processor. If you need to upgrade the GPU, I would highly recommend going for the highest end option, the Radeon Pro 5700 XT with 16 gigabytes of video memory, as it is not just a very good GPU, but it is also going to future-proof your iMac for a few years to come. When it comes to the RAM, do not upgrade, as you can actually upgrade the RAM yourselves and save hundreds of dollars when compared to Apple's pricing. I've included some RAM options in the description box down below in case you want to do that. And when it comes to the storage, my answer is the same as with the Mac Mini and the 24-inch iMac. Just get external storage instead, as you have a fixed desktop computer. And by the way, you can get a 500 gigabyte Samsung T7 SSD with speeds of over one gigabyte per second for just $80. Link in the description.
Then at $2,400, we have the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, this is the most powerful laptop that Apple sells right now. And it is an amazing choice for anyone who wants a lot of performance on the go. But just like the 27 inch iMac, Apple is also working on a major redesign for this, which is also set to launch by the end of 2021. So I would honestly hold off on this, especially considering how much it costs right now. Also, the M1 MacBook Pro is actually faster CPU wise. So again, if you're a developer, a photographer, and you need more CPU performance than GPU performance, then an M1 MacBook Pro or even an M1 MacBook Air are both better options than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Not even to mention that they both offer a significantly better battery life as well. But if you do need that extra GPU performance, then the maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro with a 5600M is about double the performance of the M1's integrated graphics. However, keep in mind that you would end up paying $3,500 for the 16 inch MacBook Pro in this case, compared to just $1,300 on the MacBook Pro M1. So you could literally buy almost three MacBook Pros M1s for the price of a 16 inch with the 5600M graphics. And on top of that, the T2 chip inside is still causing occasional crashes. So I would personally stay away from the 16 inch MacBook Pro until Apple redesigns it later this year. And finally, we have the most expensive computer that Apple makes, the Mac Pro, which starts at $6 thousand dollars. What makes this computer unique is that it is Apple's only Mac that is almost entirely upgradable. You can easily swap out the RAM, the storage, and you can even add your own GPU as well as even swap out the processor as long as you have a compatible Intel Xeon one. The Mac Pro is the ideal computer for anyone who wants a Mac super long term. Think 10 years long term or even more, or for people who are just sitting on a mountain of cash and uh, they just want to spend it on the most powerful Mac that they can buy. The only problem is that the baseline model, which costs $6,000, is actually very weak performance wise for that price, with the M1 MacBook Air being more powerful in terms of the single core CPU performance. GPU wise, the 580X inside the baseline Mac Pro is almost twice as powerful as the M1's integrated graphics. But for a machine that costs this much, that is simply not enough. Okay, so in this case, what is the best Mac Pro configuration that gives you the best bang for the buck? Well, I would say it is the one with a 12 core CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the Radeon Pro W 5700X GPU, which is really similar to the 5700 XT, and 256 gigabytes of storage, as remember, you can always upgrade the storage yourself afterwards if you need to. However, you should also keep in mind that Apple is working on a Mac Pro with an Apple Silicon as well, which is set to launch by the end of 2022. So definitely keep that in mind. But at the same time, also keep in mind that the upcoming Apple Silicon Mac Pro would most certainly not be as upgradable as this one is. There is no way that Apple will allow you to have an AMD GPU inside of it, at least I don't think so. Instead, I believe that Apple will very likely sell its own proprietary graphic modules. So if you need the ultimate Mac that does everything, works natively with Windows, has a ton of ports, and is also fully customizable, then get this Intel Mac Pro. However, if you are a video editor, I have seen reports that M1 Macs actually end up exporting faster than the Mac Pro uh, because of their hardware-based H.265 encoder. So if you work with H.265 footage, any M1 Mac is a better choice, but if you work with raw files or anything that's super demanding, then definitely do consider the Mac Pro. So there you go, the full guide as to which Mac to buy in 2021 so far. Let me know in the comments which Mac would you actually consider, and if you want to buy any of the products mentioned in this video, definitely consider buying them from Amazon um, because Amazon customer support is just uncomparable compared to Apple's. Like I'm talking from my experiences, it's just been incredible. Um, and they also have lower prices than Apple. And if you use the links below, you also support a channel as well. So uh, thank you for doing that. And yeah, it has been pretty much it. Uh, definitely give it a like if you've enjoyed it to let us know. It also helps the algorithm. And subscribe if you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one hopefully was. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.